In this video, we're going to be looking at completing the square. Now, in order to be able to do this topic, you should be able to expand brackets, in particular, double brackets. So make sure you've gone and practiced that first before you do this video. Okay, so I've got three brackets here and all three of them are squared, which means they're double brackets, that's all. So I'd like you to expand them. So this is all the squared means. It just means multiplied by itself. So it's like a double version of itself. Okay, so I'd like you to pause the video and expand all three of these brackets. Okay, so in the first one, you should have got x squared plus a 3x plus another 3x plus 9. And of course, you can simplify that and you get x squared plus 6x plus 9. And looking at the second one, you should have got x squared plus 6x plus 6x again plus 36. And of course, if you simplify that down, you get x squared plus 12x plus 36. Now I'd like you to pay attention to the number inside the squared brackets. So for example, in the first one, three. And once we simplified it, what the number in front of x was. So in the first one, it was six. In the second one, the number inside the squared brackets was six. And once we simplified it down, the number next to x was 12. So I hope you can think of a pattern which is happening here. So let's open the last one and see if the pattern you're thinking is actually there. So of course you should have x squared minus 5x minus another 5x plus 25. Although they're minus 5 and minus 5, when you multiply two negatives, you still get plus 25. Simplifying that down, you get x squared minus 10x plus 25. And the pattern you should notice between the two colors I have, one is double the other one. So whatever is inside the square brackets, once it's expanded and simplified, it gets doubled in front of x. Now this pattern is very important for this topic. So let's have a go at this, doing it backwards. So here I've got the expanded version and I'd like to factorize it. And I want to put it in that form which we have with the squared brackets. Now I want to put in the brackets form with that squared sign in. Okay, so let's do the first one. Now, if you notice the pattern, what's going to be inside the squared brackets is going to be half that number in front of x. So it's going to be x plus 4 all squared. So hopefully you've got that pattern and you did say x plus 4 squared. And of course, if you expanded this, you'd get the x squared plus 4x plus 4x, which of course makes 8x when you simplify that. And you also get that plus 16, the 4 times 4 will give you 16. Okay, so let's do the next one. So again, we're gonna put half this number, which is in front of the x, it's 14 there, so we're gonna put seven in the brackets. So it's going to be x plus seven, all squared. And of course, if you expand this, you'll get your x squared, and you'll get your seven x, and another seven x, which will give you that 14 x. However, we're also getting 49. Now you can clearly see here, we've only got plus nine. So it's not quite working. We're getting 49 when we should get simply nine, but that's okay. We're just going to minus 40. And with completing the square, you're allowed to do that. You can put anything outside that brackets. So the point here is the number doesn't really matter. We'll just adjust it and make sure it works. The big thing is that you put whatever's in front of X, half of that amount in the squared brackets. Let's practice some more of these. Okay, so again, we're gonna put half that 16 in. So it's going to be x plus eight, all squared, except when we expand this, we get 64 instead of three. Now, if I'm getting 64, but I actually want three, I can simply just subtract 61 and it'll all work out fine. And that's what I've done. Now, if I expand it, I will get 64, but I've got a minus 61, and that will make it to three, what it should be. And let's do the next one. As you can see there, I put half the amount of what's in front of X, half of that four, which is two. Now, if I expand this, it all works out fine, apart from the fact that I get plus four, when I should be getting plus 36. 
So I need another 32 to correct this. So I'll simply just add 32 and it's all fine now. Okay, so let's try the last one. And of course, in the middle, we've got minus 12. And half of that, of course, is minus six. Now, a lot of you might be having problems getting that number, the adjustment number to make sure it works. And the way I do it, which might help you, is what I do is first, it's meant to be plus 25. So I simply just put that there. And then I'll subtract the extra number I'm getting. And the extra number I'm getting is plus 36. I know there's a minus six there, but of course, minus six times minus six is plus 36. So the extra number I'm getting, which I don't want, is plus 36. So I just simply subtract that like this. So what did I do? That 25, I just put it there as it, as it is. It's plus 25. I put plus 25 and I subtracted the extra number I get. Now I'm just going to simplify that. And that comes to a minus 11 at the end. So if you're having problems finding that adjustment number, just do it like this. Okay, so here we've got equation of a curve here, and it's a quadratic curve. And the question wants us to find the turning point. So you might be asking, what is the turning point? Well, I'm hoping you know what quadratics look like. It looks something like this. And I've marked the turning point with an X. Now, you should know this point can also be called a stationary point or a minimum point. And if your quadratic was the other way around, it'd be called a maximum point. So you can have many names for this point, but here they've called it a turning point and we need to work it out. Now, from looking at the graph I've drawn here, I didn't really bother with the axes. You need to realize what's special about that point. Now that point on the curve is the point with the lowest Y value, the minimum Y value. Now that's very important, so remember that. That point there is the point with the lowest possible y value on the curve. Okay, so how do we do it? And since we're doing the video on completing the square, you probably guessed it. We need to start by completing the square. Now you should have been able to do this bit. We simply put half the six inside. Now, again, if you're having problems thinking of the adjustment number, do what I did. It's a plus three at the top. We're gonna to bring that plus three down. And we're going to subtract the extra number which comes out of this. And the extra number when you expand the squared brackets is a plus nine. So I'm simply subtracting it. So the plus three is from the original equation and I'm minus nine because it's the extra number which comes out of expanding that squared brackets. And simplifying that down gives us a minus six at the end. Okay, so now let's talk about the turning point. Now the name of the game is you can make X whatever you like. You can put it as minus a million, plus a billion, whatever you like. However, we need to be smart about it because we're trying to make Y as small as possible. Now, the key thing is the squared brackets. We need to talk about this segment of the equation. Now, just think about it, it's squared. Now, when you square something, what's the lowest possible number it can come out to be? Think about squaring some numbers in your head. You can get all sorts of numbers. You can get big numbers, really big numbers, but what's the smallest number you can get? Can you get a negative? Well, whenever you square a number, it never comes out as negative, even if you square a negative number. For example, minus two squared, which is minus two times minus two, is plus four. So you're always getting a positive number. So what's the smallest number you can make it? And I'm hoping you said zero. If you make that segment, which I've put in square brackets, zero, you get zero squared, which is zero, and that's the lowest you can make it. So we need to think about making it X a certain number, which makes this fragment zero, because that's the lowest we can make this fragment. Now we'll talk about what value for X we're going to use later. So we've made it zero, so what does Y come out to be? And you can see here, if that bit's zero, Y just comes out to be minus six. So we can say for certain the lowest Y value you can possibly make it is minus six. So that point on that curve I showed you earlier, the Y part of that coordinate must be minus six. Now let's talk about what does X need to be? Well, we've got X plus three there. If you've got X plus three, what must X be to make that X plus three zero? And you should have said minus three. So X must be minus three. Remember what I said earlier, you can choose X to be whatever you like. And you know why we chose it to be minus three now. 
because that's the value which will make y the smallest possible. And the y is minus 6, of course. And you can put that as a coordinate. So the coordinate of the turning point is minus 3, minus 6. So that's one use of completing the square. And there's many. So now we're going to use completing the square to solve this equation. Now, don't rush and factorize it and solve it if you already know how to do that, which I'm sure you do if you're doing this video, because we want to solve it by completing the square. You can also solve it by using the quadratic formula. That's always available for you. And factorizing is available when it can be factorized. But like I said, here we're going to only use completing the square. So let's start that. We're going to use half of that value in the middle. Okay, so how do we choose that number? So let's do it the way I like. I put that minus 21 down and I get rid of the extra number. I've got plus 2 there, so the extra number is going to be plus 4. So we're going to get rid of it by putting minus 4. And of course, that's all equal to 0. And now we can simplify that minus 21 minus 4. And that comes out to be minus 25. Now we're going to do the solving bit. We're going to try to make x the subject. First step, move that minus 25 to the other side. Next step, we'll get rid of that squared. And of course, the opposite of that is square rooting. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, you might be thinking, why did I put plus or minus there? Well, what is the square root of 25? Now, a lot of you are probably saying it's 5. Because 5 squared gives you 25. But so does minus 5. Minus 5 squared also gives you 25. So the square root of 25 is not simply 5, it's 5 or it's minus 5. It's plus or minus 5. And whenever we square root, we must write plus or minus because they're both possible answers. Now the next step, we need to get rid of that plus 2, leaving x there by itself. So we're going to put minus 2 on the right-hand side. So there we've got our answer. x equals minus 2 plus or minus 5. And what that plus or minus means is there's two answers. There's minus 2 plus 5, and there's minus 2 minus 5. So minus 2 plus 5 gives us our first answer, x equals 3. And the minus 2 minus 5 gives us our second answer, minus 7. And we've done it. We solved the equation using completing the square. Now, a lot of the time with these questions, you probably won't be able to square root to get exact number. Like, for example, here we had square root 25 you might have something like square root 24. But usually, that will be in a calculator paper. So you just simply put the final answer into your calculator. Or it could be the case that it's a non-calculator, but they want the exact answer. So you just simply leave the answer with the square root there. And there we have it. I hope you found that video useful. Support us by liking, subscribing, and share this with your friends. And if you still got some more questions on anything, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com where you'll find your questions answered.